Good morning, friends in Christ. It is Monday morning here in central Wisconsin, a little cooler this morning. Uh, when I took my daughter to school today, 30 degrees, and so a little chillier today. Um, but we've had a beautiful, beautiful uh, summer and fall. And so we're thankful that you're joining us on this Monday for our Mount Olive Live Facebook devotions later uploaded to our Mount Olive YouTube channel. And so whether you're jumping on now live or watching it later, we are blessed that you are growing in your relationship with Jesus Christ as we continue to begin our day in the word of the Lord. And so on Friday, we finished the book of Hebrews. And so we asked uh, people, what book do we want to do next? And um, the majority was Romans. And so I'm going to ask you to go ahead and take out your Bibles today into the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. And we're going to find ourselves in Romans chapter 1 today. Romans was a pivotal book for the Christian church and especially for us as Lutherans. An Augustinian monk, Martin Luther, um, under... Uh, the influence and teachings of St. Augustine, reading the book of Romans is where he found the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ that would change his life and change the Christian church that we are part of today as we found the gospel. And so Luther, living as a monk and a professor of theology, always trying to be good enough and to be perfect, and to do good enough things in God's sight, and yet felt like he failed every day. As he digs into Romans, he learns that we are saved by God's grace through faith. And the good news of the gospel is that we are made right with God, not because of what we do, but because of what Jesus Christ has done for us, and how that changes everything. And so Romans is a huge book in that way. Written by the Apostle Paul, we know a lot about the Apostle Paul because he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament inspired by the Holy Spirit. We know that he has dual citizenship in Rome, that he was born a Hebrew, a Jew, was given the name Saul, like the first king of Israel. He is also from the tribe of the 12 tribes of Israel, from the tribe of Benjamin. He was circumcised on the eighth day. He was a part of the covenant. And he loved his faith. He grew in his faith to be a leader in the Jewish faith as he was a Pharisee. He was persecuting and arresting Christians until God intervened on his road to Damascus. And as God calls out to him, he comes to know Jesus as his Lord and Savior and the true God. He is baptized and God calls him to suffer a lot for the gospel, to be his chosen instrument to minister to the Gentiles. And so he goes on these missionary journeys, going into the big city first and into the Jewish synagogues and teaching the Jews first and then out into the rural areas and teaching the Gentiles. He did not plant the, chant, the church at Rome, although he's planted a lot of churches. And so Romans was already planted sometime after Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit came. And so... The Church of Rome was then planted in the book of Acts, and it has Jewish Messianic believers, and it also has Gentile believers. And so there's some division and some things going on there. And so Paul writes this letter to the church at Rome so that they are unified in their understanding of the gospel and the new covenant and what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And so has a lot of sound doctrine in the book of Romans. And so that's a little bit of our introduction today. Let's look at Romans chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. Let's dig into the word of God. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God. And so Paul lets us know right away that he is the author of this letter to the church at Rome and who he is. And so Paul usually almost always identifies himself. That's why when we just finished the book of Hebrews, we believe that Paul was probably not the author of Hebrews, probably Apollos, 
because Paul usually does what he does right here, and that's where he lets you know that he is the author. And he lets you know that he is a servant of Jesus Christ. And so he is a slave, a bond servant of Jesus. He does not consider his life to be his own, but it's been bought with a price, and that's the precious blood of Jesus. So he lives for Jesus, not himself. And so he is a slave to the work and to the kingdom of the Lord. And not begrudgingly, but joyfully, because God has called him to be a part of his kingdom. And it's a blessing to be called, and it's a blessing to do things God's way, not our way. And so Paul has a wonderful perspective on that. Called to be an apostle. And so Jesus Christ called him on the road to Damascus. It wasn't something he was searching. It was God's calling on his life and the call to be that missionary to the Gentiles, set apart for the gospel of God. And so as Christians, we are set apart. And we are set apart because we are children of the living God. And that changes everything. And as followers of Jesus, we are called to be salt and light. We are called to be different and to be set apart. And so we are in the world, but not of the world. And so that is God's calling for us. He goes on to say, the gospel of God. Gospel is a key word in the book of Romans. We're going to see it at least 12 times. And gospel means good news, good message. And so when we see the gospel of Matthew, the gospel of Mark, the gospel of Luke, the gospel of John. Those are all the good news and the good message of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And the good news is what he has done for us on the cross. And so in the book of Romans, we're going to be taught some sound Lutheran doctrine that comes straight from the Bible when it comes to faith alone, grace alone, scripture alone, and when it comes to us understanding the true meaning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which he promised beforehand through his prophets and the holy scriptures concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh and was declared to be the son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness, by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. And so Paul takes us all the way back to the first gospel promise when Adam and Eve sinned in Genesis chapter 3 that God's going to send a Savior. And so through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who wrestles with God and becomes Israel, and God builds a nation of Israel, and through this nation will come Messiah, through the son of David. And so through David's lineage and through the tribe of Judah will come Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Savior of the world that the prophets have told us about long before he came. And so he lets us know that Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior of the world, the one that the scriptures all point to and all of the scriptures that he fulfills to prove that he is the Messiah. And what sets him apart, being true man and true God, the Son of God, was his life, his death, and his resurrection, and the fulfillment of all of the scriptures and the prophecies that point us to Jesus the Christ. And so we continue. Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the nations, including you who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. And so here we see this word grace, and we're going to see that throughout the book of Romans over 20 times. And then apostleship, one who means to be sent, one who is sent out on a mission from God. The Blues Brothers had something to be said about that, on a mission from God. And so Paul is on a mission from God, and you and I, as part of the church, as followers of Jesus Christ, we are sent out. And we are sent out to be missionaries for Jesus Christ. And so this apostleship is God's calling on Paul's life to be sent out as he knows about the resurrected Lord and Savior Jesus. And that this gospel message is not just for the Jews, but Jesus came for all nations, for all people. And he makes that clear. And for all who belong to Jesus Christ, you and I, 
We find our identity, our mission, and our purpose in our belonging to Jesus, that we are in Christ Jesus. And because we are in Christ Jesus, that changes everything now and for all of eternity. And so sometimes our emotions and feelings may be all over the place of who we are. Well, who you are is a child of God, and that that's not based on your emotions or feelings. It's based on the declared status of what Jesus Christ has done for you and that you have come to know the gospel and that you have been baptized and you have confirmed your faith in your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so you are in Christ, which changes everything, and we belong to him. Verse 7, to all those in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints, loved by God. Grace that we're going to see over and over in Romans is God's undeserved love, mercy, and favor upon us. And so grace is that wonderful gift that he does not treat us as our sins deserves, but instead he loves us, he forgives us, and that he gives us love and mercy. And we're going to see grace over and over. And then that we are called to be what? Saints. You know, so many times we think of saints being the name of churches and people who lived a life that was worthy of God's honor. And so the church recognized them and maybe they performed some miracles and they did some great deeds. And so they were canonized as saints. But that was all a part of the Roman Catholic Church. And that comes from the church, doesn't come from the Bible. The Bible, notice what it says, who are saints, you and I. It says, for all of us who are loved by God, who belong to Christ, who are believers and followers of Jesus, we are called to be saints. And so what is a saint? A saint is a believer in Jesus. And so Luther would call us simul justus epicotter. We are same time saint, same time sinner on this side of heaven. And that struggle that takes place every day with that conflict and that tension of that battle of the sinful flesh and the Holy Spirit living in us and that war that takes place every day of how we continually submit and surrender to Jesus. But know today that you are loved by God. You're a child of God. You belong to God. Know the good news of the gospel of what Christ Jesus has done for you and know that you are considered a saint, whether you feel it or not, that's who you are. These are all declared statuses on who God says that you are. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we see repeatedly over and over in Paul's greeting, grace and Jesus, grace and Jesus, grace and Jesus. Now we know why. That Romans chapter 1, Luther fell in love with and he says that we should be in it every day in the book of Romans, and especially chapter 1, to be reminded of who we are in Christ Jesus and the gospel of Jesus Christ and the good news. He says this needs to be your daily bread. And so every day that you are in this word and that it shapes and lets you know who you are, what Christ has done, and what he calls you to do and to be. And so we look forward of going through the book of Romans, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Thank you for joining us today for our introduction. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are thankful for this letter to the church at Rome. And not just a letter to the church at Rome, but it's a letter to your church today. And so, Lord, let every member of your church here and around the world be reminded of the good news of the gospel, of what you have done for us and who you are and how you have called us, that we have a place of belonging and it is a place of love and mercy and grace as we get to serve you all the days of our life. Bless our day today as you send us out to be your people, to be your saints, that we are separate ones called to be set apart for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Friends in Christ, we're thankful that you joined us today for this devotion. We pray that it was a blessing to you as you continue to grow in your faith, in your journey, and following Jesus as God continues to do a work in you and through you and for you to be used by you to be a blessing to others. And so God's blessings today as you go out, sent out by him, belonging in him to do his kingdom work. Have a blessed day in the name of Jesus Christ, the resurrected Lord. Amen.